Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome, folks. Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. We've got quite a show today, and boy, there's all sorts of issues that are out there on the table today. I mean, we got issues all over the place. And all due respect, thank goodness uh, to our president-elect, Donald Trump. I mean, he, he's got the issue of the day today, and that is an issue that we have brought to the table right here in Portland, Oregon. And that is the issue of racism and hate here in the city of Portland, Oregon, okay? And it's all over. He, he brought the issue up after the football season that just opened up, and it was all about the flag and this, that, and the other. There were different responding to the center. But the bottom line is that he brought the issue up, and I think that was a good issue. We are talking about the issue of race now and hate. Very, very, very important. And so I want to thank the president for doing that. Bang, right off the run. Okay, good. So what we're going to do now on this show, because it's the hottest issue going at this point in time, we're going to, I've got two, we got, not two, yes, we got, I got a co-host here with, uh, with Teresa, and then we got, uh, gee whiz, I'm sorry, Fred Stewart. <laughs> Fred, there's my buddy Fred. Remember we did the show, we did the show on, uh, on, in fact, we talked about the whole issue of race and racism because of Fred. Fred brought the issue up. He's been bringing the issue up here in the city of Portland. Folks want to run back from it, but boy, I tell you, he's out there on social media, and he's got people talking about this issue, and, uh, and our dear friend from the Willamette Week, uh, who, am I, who am I thinking about, Fred? Mark Zussman. Mark and Zussman. Nigel Jacquees. And Nigel Jacquees. They're both from Willamette Week, right? Yep. One's owner and the other is writer. Yeah. Right. And, and but we don't know Nigel's. I mean, Nigel. There's, he's one of two pillars here. For all we know, he's. That's a, what I'm saying. He's yeah. got an ownership stake now. Probably. Oh, he's got an ownership yeah. stake. Probably. Now. But public surprise. What, is that what you call it? Public surprise. Yeah. Yeah. You got the. I mean, big time stuff. Two time Pulitzer winner. Pulitzer, right, right. Yeah. And then and then this whole issue, I guess, came up with. Why don't you just bring that up to date with us a little bit in terms of. How this started off, and from the standpoint of the Willamette Week and you, I think it was at the Mac Club or something. You were there, just just for the benefit well, of. Well, yeah, if you go to my website, fredstewart.com, the story is there. But okay, but just uh, briefly, just, what, what, how did that? What happened? Well, you know, Mark and I, we've known each other for a long, long time. I okay. mean, we're not beer buddies or nothing like that. We don't, you know, go out and have beers or nothing. But we've known each other quite a while. Yeah, and I think Mark um, was surprised like a, a lot of white people are when they do something racist. I think he was surprised at me making the accusation uh, that he, I feel he's racist. Mm -hmm. I personally feel Mark Zussman and Willamette Week, the management of Willamette Week, has a bias against black people. Mm -hmm. And uh, another reason why I decided to write the article is, you know, they are the type of racist people that black people in Oregon face the most. Mm -hmm. um, Mark Zussman is not a David Duker. Even though David Duke would swear Mark Zussman wants to be like him, but yeah, he's Jewish, he couldn't be. Well, I know that's why he, <laughs> he you know, he was a, you know, you. guys like Mark want to be like me, yeah, but they yeah, can't be like yeah, me yeah, because right, they're right, Jewish. Right, right, right. But yeah. I mean, um, you know, um, I think it's it it a very important part of the discussion about how racism um, is in Portland. A lot of white people like Mark Zussman do racist things, don't necessarily notice it may not intend to do it, mm -hmm. but do it every day. I mean, Mark doesn't hire black people to walk from, work for a limited week. We got some incredible things like pitch black and some bl uh, black people doing um, business in Portland. We got a lot of uh, vibrant economic stuff going on in the music industry and entertainment industry with, um, um, you know, in the black community. Well, I mean, we doesn't cover it. Uh, we got the guy who's in charge of West Coast uh, rap awards, pretty significant award, uh, given out every year. Uh, this year, he had people like Snoop Dogg and and MC Hammer and other old people, um, you know, in attendance. You know, um, one week doesn't cover that. They covered though. There's a white girl, good-looking little blonde girl, who they think is going to be the next Eminem. They did mm -hmm. talk about her. Mm -hmm. um, she's okay. Mm -hmm. That could be the next M and M, <laughs> but here she's got some bona. You know, one week is in a town with some bona fide West Coast rapping cred. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough. Uh, they don't have any connection to the black community really. And then I started looking back at you know the last twenty five thirty years, and they really don't have any black leaders that they've liked, that they've really supported. They, and that's because it's not so much that they should like black leaders. I mean, I don't think any newspaper should have any favorites. 
I don't believe in that. I think they should be the, the critical eye for the community. But they don't have any relationship uh, deep enough in the black community so that they can accurately write about what's going on well, I don't think I fall in that category, but but we're talking and about stories. And I mean, yeah. look at you. I, I mean, I got some major if, stories if, that I could talk about well, this whole business. Well, about. not just that. I mean, uh, how they treat you. I mean, oh yeah, oh yeah. You've been around for forty years. You've met everybody. You've been around for or, everything major that's happened in the black community, let alone the Portland community, the last forty years. And you know, they don't show any respect. Yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm not expecting them to to be a lap dog to you or nothing. But no. to show a guy like you some respects. And the thing is, a lot of white people go through their lives every day, being as racist as Mark Zussman and Nigel Jacquees, um, and not even notice it. I mean, right now, if you sit down with Mark Zussman and, and Nigel and say, My, Mark, Nigel, do you think you're racist? They're going to say no. Of course. Then mm -hmm. you're going to say, Nigel, you are a two-time Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. And last year, you took advantage of a black man's daughter doing a campaign. Aged 18. Aged eight, 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 19, 19, 19. To talk yeah. about something inconsequential. Exactly. And you lied. Right. And not only did you lie, you only used one source. I mean, right. you were so un Pulitzer Prize winning level journalist. <laughs> you know, I mean, you must have felt nobody would care. Right. And why would, you not, why would they not care about you not being professional? Yeah. You, you must have said in your head, he's just a Negro. He probably mm -hmm. said the you know the N I the, word. The nigger. You yeah. Yeah. Nigger. yeah. I mean, let's talk Nobody's about gonna it. care yeah, you know, yeah, that I'm stepping it. away from my yeah, right. cred. I mean, yeah. would Linus Pauling do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Who well, and, and the other thing, Fred, is take a look at their recent article. Do you remember what it was about? The restaurants? Yeah. Support your black restaurant week. Yeah. Why did I mean, that? That to me, that's an insult. Why not support black restaurants? Support black business. Why Beforehand. support hey, black restaurants? Hey, restaurant they could have done week. a whole. Article, well, a whole pa it's paper on. Incredibly condescending. But pitch black. Yeah. We got this thing going on with Stephen Green yeah. and a bunch of other people where they're pitching black entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and new businesses in Portland. Yeah. That is huge. Now, they've done similar things for white businesses, yeah. white entrepreneurs. Oh, very much right. so. Very you understand? Much so. Very much so. But, but here, they never phrase it, support your white business. Yeah, they don't yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. But, no, yeah. they, they don't well, do on that. On that particular point. But hey, they don't hire black writers. No. They yeah. have no yeah. black staff writers yeah. at yeah. all. I know. Yeah. They have, yeah. And, and then, you know, they're not as quite as bad as, or, as um, Oregon, uh, Oregonian. Yeah. Oregonian has this writer. She's a nice woman. I don't have anything against her. Casey Parks. She's a nice woman. Mm -hmm. Casey is. Um, and you can tell she's a she's an earnest woman, but they got a gay woman writing on the black community, <laughs> a gay white woman. Now, a gay woman can do it, but understanding the complexities right. of yes. homosexuality yes. in yes. the black community. Yes. If you're going to hire a, a homosexual person, I would at least hire a homosexual black person. Right. The, the sexuality of the r reporter is not that important, but. What I'm getting From to back, is, yeah, yeah, that's a whole. You, you're, you're at least going to try to get somebody who can get into the community mm -hmm. and get, for, and yeah. not from a kind of. I mean, Casey doesn't mean to do it. Yeah. I know. I mean, I've, I've talked to her. I've never actually met her face to face, but mm -hmm. I've talked to her on the phone quite a few times, and I followed her on Facebook and Twitter, and I think she's a sincere person. Mm -hmm. But sometimes even Casey, who I'm sure is trying not to sound this way, I mean, she comes across so condescending toward black folks. And I don't think Casey means to be that way. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, what I'm getting to is, you know, we, uh, that's how our racism works in Portland. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of, you know, Casey Parks racism. We get a lot of, uh, of Nigel Jacquees racism. Nigel Jacquees racism is more intentional. Sure. That's the closest we get to the old Ross Barnett. What do you mean by intentional? What do you mean oh, I mean, he Come is here. a very professional guy. If you, I mean, the more I learn about Nigel and his life, he's an incredible person. You understand? Is a very, very smart Where's person. Where's he from? Where's he from? Uh, I'm not he's gonna, not from here. He's not from here. <laughs> not I'll, from I'll here. say this. I'm not gonna say this because <laughs> I don't want him knowing how is I learned about is him. He a U.S. citizen. But I will say, is he a US I will, citizen? I will say, Nigel, well, Nigel well, is, on, is, is, in his own right, is an incredible person. Uh, a person of that intellect and that background, when they're racist, is intentional. I See, mean, I, I think he's. Where I think is he he's, from? I'm still uh, asking the question. Uh, where is he from? I'll let Teresa talk about it. Where well, is he from? Oh God, I knew this, but I. He's forgotten. not from Portland. It's a, huh? He's is not he from, from Portland. down south. No, no. No. Is he from north? 
Uh, east. 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 Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Where is he, Fred? No, no, no. Where is he from? I, I That's another say, show. I wouldn't say that That's he's... Another you know, That's another I, show. I wouldn't say that he's an incredible person. I, I would say wait, wait, he's no, 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 an no. incredible investigator. I okay. And he's an incredible investigative wait. journalist. Okay. And in so far as he has done some very important historical stories that were noteworthy that got him a lot of attention. But I would not say he's the most creative writer in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. And I would not say he's an incredible person because his morality is questionable. I will say that. I wasn't talking about that as he's a good guy in that <laughs> right, respect. Right. I'm just saying if you, the more I learn about his life and the things he's done, mm -hmm. different challenges and stuff, he, and without the racism part of his life, mm -hmm. he'd be somebody I would want a, a young person to know more about. You know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about? Because he's done a lot of things. That's why I understand a guy like him chooses to be where he is. Right. You understand? I mean, this is not this is a calculating guy. He well, yeah. he, he is, picks yeah. and chooses his own pieces. Yeah, he he intends to be the way he is. When he's racist, he wants to be racist that moment. I don't you understand? He <laughs> he is that type of white guy wow. that will say, "Look, wow. nobody's gonna." He's he's calculating. Nobody's gonna care. It's a black guy. Yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? They're yeah. not going to care. Yeah. I mean, he's like that. Mm. Um, he is that type of intellect. Well, why would you make that kind of a statement? Because I'm is, learning about is, is there a sampling or something? You, you talk, we talked you know, about I, your I daughter I did a bunch of research time. on him, too. Did you? About a year and a half ago, I read mm -hmm. everything and I could on him. you know what I'm talking him. about. Calculating. Um, he has some interesting things that have happened to him in his past. His parent, He lost his parents mm -hmm. both in some kind of an accident, very young. Oh, really? And I think that that is what drives him in a way. He's a very bitter person, I think. And he really gets off, I think. <laughs> On, on ruining people because I think there's a part of him inside that's not happy. Hmm. But that's just my opinion. Hmm. 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 <laughs> um, you know, and it's not, I can't disagree so, with so her. So now, now that we've sort of brought this <laughs> I can't, It's not just my much I can't well, disagree, but well, I'm going to say, okay. well, Bruce, wait, is, wait. he's like you. Okay. He has a good resume. Okay, yeah, okay. I would agree. Well, let me see. Let, let's talk about this. <laughs> we've, we've talked about this peace aspect of it. You talked about soldier. Now, what about... Um, where do we go from here? I mean, what, uh, have you seen any improvement as a result of... I'm, we, we reached out, by the way, to Willamette Week, you know? Mm -hmm. We reached out to him. I basically invited Willamette Week sure. last time around, but... It's and and do you remember call. what I predicted two weeks ago? Yep. They wouldn't touch it with it, a 10-foot pole. It's too early, <laughs> but I will say I've enjoyed the conversations. A lot of people, a lot of people who've known Mark and Nigel, yeah. both here and other places have contacted me, This because this article has been re read over 25,000 times mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And, um, and it's been shared like over, almost 400 times. Yeah, almost 400 times. It's yeah. been, it's been, yeah, it's been, been incredible. But what I'm getting to is what I've liked is it started a great conversation. And some of the most impactful things on me personally yeah. have come from white people. Yeah. Giving me their reflections. And the thing is, Fred and I were talking, and he said he's had several people call him up and say, I, I won't read Willamette Week anymore. I had a friend on my Facebook last week who, who mm -hmm. messaged with me and said, you know, I've noticed the quality of their journalism just sinking the last five years. And he said, I read the article by Fred, and he said, I'm never going to read Willamette Week again. Hmm. I mean, hmm. you know, so we're both getting those messages from people. Yeah. Well, but that, and that wasn't the intent from my article, wait, 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 but... Wait, wait. But that, there's a major concern here, mm -hmm. because we're getting right into politics. Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got the president, you know, we've got that whole issue of race. I mean, in fact, in all due respect, we don't have a situation where we have a president that's basically just on his own, just doing the work. You know, in all due respect, we got, we got, we got, we still have a runoff, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We got a president mm -hmm. who's running for office, i.e., um, uh, Donald Trump, even though he's president, and CNN News. Yeah. Well, well that's the well, other Bruce, you're hitting on deal. something. One of the reasons why I wanted to, what really made me decide I wanted to hopefully get this conversation going. I mean, when I'm awake, what I've learned about Mark and everybody, they really count on their endorsement season. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. As far as, a, you know, part of their business exactly. model, as far as their credibility yes. of the organization. Yes. It's their flagship yes. period of time where they're doing business. Exactly. And you see, the thing is, David Duke and, 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 um, Donald Trump has said something that bugs the hell out of me. And this is something they, Donald Trump hasn't said it very much lately, but he said it a lot last year, is that they all think like me. They all want to do what I'm doing. They're just not going to do it. You know, uh, they're, they're chicken. Yeah. They're, right. they're cowards. And the thing is, you know, you look at who these guys, are, I mean, what's an endorsement worth from the Oregonian or uh, when I'm at week when they have no minorities in the room? When they do things that are consistently racist. I mean, if you're racist, what else are you? You know what I'm talking about? Are you uh, against Catholics? I don't know. I mean, I haven't picked up on that yet. But what I'm trying to say is they're an organization that accepts discrimination. 
So what is an endorsement from any one of those papers? Mm -hmm. What is it really worth? What, yeah. Are they saying, hey, we think these people are cool because they think a lot like me? Yeah. Well, how many people want to think <laughs> like racism, yeah. want to be racist like Mark Zussman? How many people want to be racist like um, Nigel Jaquees? You understand what I'm talking about? I mean, if Nigel says, I like this politician, this white politician even, yeah, right. let's say they're white, right, right. what are they really telling us? Mm -hmm. Are they telling us they like this person because they feel they're going to be better for the community? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're racist, what are you going to endorse? Mm -hmm. You're going to endorse other racist people, mm -hmm. people that get along with you. <laughs> you you're mm -hmm. the people that mm -hmm. you like. Mm -hmm. And it goes in other areas like that. And I'm like, you know, guys, um, I'm not telling people, but you you make got, your own decision if only, you want to. The only well, problem I have with that, and the thing that really gets me upset, uh -huh. is that Zussman is Jewish. And Jewish have always identified with blacks. When I think about the NAACP, the origination, this, hey. that, that. But in all due respect, when they go in a room, they can, like the million, they can change. Hey, I Jewish community change. was very heavily involved yeah, in I the mean, civil rights movement yeah, well, with so. Martin Luther and, King. And I know a number of um, Jews here in Portland, Oregon, that I know and respect. Yep. But in all due respect, when I found out that Mark was Jewish, that bothered me. In fact, I reached out to him when I was at the Observer, when I got the Observer newspaper, mm -hmm. and I was a publisher. The whole idea was, hey, I'm going to call another newspaper and say, hey, let's sit down with me, because I've never, never been in that business before. Yep. And, 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 but I guess who, guess who did kind of like, I did talk with it somewhat a bit, and that was Stickle. Out there going, did, but, did, he was, but he was a former Marine. Mm -hmm. Did so Mark, he, did, did Zussman return your call? No, no, of he, never, he never returned the call yeah, or whatever. And, and you because see that, he's that's an elitist. That's, well, that's that's not, you see, what yeah. bugs me about that is, Bruce, you've run for office several times. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've done a lot in the city. You've provided housing. You've had this television show. You yes. know, you're, you're, you're a prominent black person in that there's not any other black person like you that's in our lifetime or before our lifetime has been like you. And even if he disagrees with you, doesn't like you, you know, to send an email yeah. or a text message to and say, courteous? to be courteous. And See, the thing is, as I'm trying to say is, this is a common courtesy that he would offer. And as a matter of fact, his partner's wife, who's our current attorney general, yes. would expect, but you see, he doesn't feel he needs to do that. And now he, he could be just a, an MF, you know, a, 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 a jerk. Or maybe he said, you know, Bruce is just a darn darky. You know, nobody's well, going right to care. Word. Say no, the right no, word. Well, nobody's going to care yeah, call me a nigger. Did call me a nigger? if I'm rude did to Bruce. Call, did he call me a nigger? Well, he could. I don't well, know. I wasn't in the room. But well, what so I'm trying to say is these called are called things we don't know. When white, do people, when white people like this do stuff like yeah, this, yeah. Who you know? We don't know. Yeah. Maybe they are saying it. Yeah. Right. You know. He, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why do you? What a guy like him would expect that somebody like you and me would give him the best mm -hmm. benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm talking about? He, a person that is a professional, not racist, would want to make sure there's no doubt. Mm -hmm. He's a professional. He runs one of the most, you know, red newspapers in Portland. Yeah. One of the most red newspapers in Oregon. Just his. You know, his honor, his personal yeah, yeah, professionalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to call up Bruce and say, yeah, Bruce, I'm not going to yeah, be on your show. Yeah, yeah. Or send a text or an email. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, yeah. Even if he didn't want it, like, are you kidding me? And no way I'm going to go on that show. He would respond yeah. and do I, that. I would have loved it. I, I would respect him for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Because in all due respect, check this out. And the last candidate, when his wife ran for attorney general, I interviewed her at Jansen Beach. Mm -hmm. I was the I was the MC. And I gave her the opportunity mm -hmm. to speak, and I introduced her and gave her an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But again, like I said, it, it was just the Voters Digest, and I was doing the right thing to do, okay? Mm -hmm. But here, like you said, and I will say, every time that I've run for office in this, in this city, I've not been respected. Mm -hmm. I've never gone to any editorial boards. Whether it's been the yeah. Oregonian, same thing with me, or, or, or whether it's been the Tribune. I've never met with the Oregonian editorial I, I've board never, ever, I've never. Well, ever. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> you're gonna love this. Last year, when I was running for office, yeah. Stuart Emmons was running. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Stuart published a couple of articles about his position and things, and that's fine. Right. Op eds. Mm -hmm. um, right. We decided to do the same thing, so we wrote an op ed about homelessness. Right. Our op ed. We called them like the same day that Stuart Emmons was out. Same day the article was in the paper. You know what they told us? We're not allowing candidates to write op-eds this, this session, this season. What? That, they literally said that to us. That was Ron Buell and CW and uh, a couple other people. And it, it was, you know, we had, wow. we, had the, we had the speakers on in the, wow. in the, so basically you know, they in the lied. car. And they lied to us straight up. The editor said, Fred, um, we've decided we're not going to have any um, op-eds from any candidates this year.
But they let, I'm sorry. They let Stuart in. The Stuart's was in there that day. Right. We, that's why, you know, hey, we're going to yeah. we're throw our... He had access. You know? He had access. Well, he's white. Yeah, he's right. They're all white. Yeah. white. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. you know... Yeah. And the thing is, if you ask that editor, if what you did was racist, he would say, well, no, we just didn't want anything from Fred. Well, th you didn't say that. You said we're not allowing anything from any candidates this year. Okay, so... Editor, how does this look? You got Stuart Edmonds, Emmons in there, who's white, with his article in there. Right. A black guy calls up, and you say, we're not letting any candidate. So one, you've lied to him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So why should the black guy assume? I mean, it, I would have been respectful. He said, Fred, we really don't like you. We don't want you to <laughs> have anything in our paper. Yeah, yeah, now that, yeah. I would have, you know, it would have hurt my feelings, but I would have expected. Yeah. I would have walked away thinking, is this racism? Yeah. You understand? Yep. Oh, the yeah. comfort zone yeah. that a lot of white people like the Oregonian, yeah. like Limit Week has with racism yeah. is insane. Yeah. I mean, George Wallace is probably jealous of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's probably like, man, if I'd been smart, screw being governor, I would have been a journalist, especially in Oregon, <laughs> man. Right. Right. I would have had ride herd. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Yeah, but, but you got to understand, you're black. You can't be no journalist. How the hell are you going to be a journalist? Oh, there's a lot of black journalists around. I even run a paper. They're in New York. They're, 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 they're some in black, New York and Chicago. There are some okay, black okay, journalists okay. that we're have talk, said that they tried to work Oregon. for the Oregonian <laughs> and Willamette Week. And, you know, you can't even get a return phone call. Well, and, and another thing is, like, if you're any kind of an odd writer like I am, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've submitted to the Oregonian yeah. and Willamette Week. They, they, they don't touch me. They are not interested in me. I've written some really yeah. good opinion pieces, sent them to the Oregonian. They didn't yeah. publish if, me. I mean, it's their paper. If they don't want to publish you, they don't want to publish oh, yeah. you. But what I'm getting to is there's this complete slice, no blacks, yeah. no yeah. Negroes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know what's yeah. funny? Donald Trump since he became president, has hired more black people yep. to work for the presidency than the Oregonian and Women Week have ever hired in black staff writers. Right. It is easier to become a black astronaut or work for Donald Trump <laughs> than to work for the Oregonian uh. or Willamette Week. Uh. I mean, right now, if a black uh. kid, if you, if, friends, white and black, uh. if you've got a black baby in front of you, Look at that baby. You know what you know? Over the next 35 years, it is more likely that black kid's going to work for a white supremacist like uh, Donald Trump or become an astronaut. <laughs> they have a better shot at going to Mars. Yeah. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot wrong with yeah. Portland. You know? Now, yeah. i gotta remember, you gotta, I got to remind you also, too, you didn't mention this paper. I mean, we're gonna be, the Tribune's gonna, up there, too. Okay, yeah. the Tribune's sitting up there. They don't have any black and folks. Dr. Pamplin has always been around. He's been a very straight-up kind of a guy. At least he's making it free. Yeah. He's allowing it to be free. I mean, doing the yeah. same thing with Lambert Week. Mm -hmm. But, that, again, that's another issue with that. And I can, the point I'm making about that, I can remember when I ran, when I ran for the, for the mayorship aspect of it, mm -hmm. and OPB took, the, uh, took a poll, mm -hmm. and I ended up at part of the top four. Yeah. And uh, Anna Griffith, who at one point in time was working for the Oregonian, mm -hmm would not even allow me to come and be interviewed. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they waited they waited months, if you will, before right. they gave me the opportunity. See, that hurt my feelings because and, and you know, Anna and, Griffin. And, and it was the Tribune that allowed me that basically got together I mean, with K O I N. I mean I was really together. disappointed when I heard when that happened because Anna, I mean Anna's a good writer. I like Anna Griffin. And Anna being a lesbian woman yep. and, and and coming yep. from her background, yep. I think I mean I was so disappointed that she was not offended. Yep. You understand I'm talking yep. about person because you know what? There but go for the grace of God, go yep. her. Yep. You understand? Yeah. Yep. The, yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, this is maybe one of the few times she gets to, you know, be white privileged. That's right. Or whatever. Yeah, that's but right. the thing yeah. is, she has faced racism. No, not so much racism, but discrimination. Right. You know she has. Well, I know. I, I know. mean, I gave her a story. I and, gave the, the and she knows about it. But the bottom line is that she would not, she will never pick up her phone. She never even called me or nothing of that nature. It was just yeah. bang. That was it. And even when I went to yeah. KOIN, I did the piece of KOIN. They would not allow me to be a part of the Wheelers group. They had right. two sets of group, and they put me over here. Yeah. I had no background. I mean, right. they couldn't talk about housing or yeah. whatever. Whole yeah, but you see, but anyways, what, but, but what sure these white people are ignoring, and I want to bring this up again, Real and quick. they do this a lot with black people, whether they like you or not, whether they agree with you or not, mm -hmm. when it comes to the small black community, you are a unique yes. individual with your own influence in the community, and you've done a lot. You deserve some respect. Plus, you're, you know, you're, as an elder, 
You know, they don't need mm -hmm. to disrespect you. Right. Yeah. Tell you what, that was a good note on that note. But hey, thanks very much for the update, guys. Appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to bring, bring. And by the way, just just so happen. What about that city council race? Are you still on board on that thing? Still looking at it. Still talking to you, people. Boy, I tell you what. I'm still I'm just, uh, we're going to need a good guy. I, you know, in all due respect, we're going to need a good guy for that fish piece. I mean, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't know where you are on that piece. But anyway, I thought I'd bring that point up. <laughs> all okay. right. Good. Hold up for a minute. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with our guest. Okay. okay. Take care, buddy. Welcome back, folks. Again, Bruce Broussard. Pull down. Portland Observer. Gee whiz, boy. I'm, I'm, I'm I got so much of this stuff in here, man. Anyway, He's back with you, the Oregon Voters Digest. Hey, welcome aboard. Hey, this this particular segment, what we're going to do, we're going to give you sort of a little update on what's happening in Oregon. Oregon, because that's what state we're living in, okay? Oregon, and then more specifically, the largest city that we have in the state of Oregon, Portland, Oregon. And I've got two guys here that knows exactly where they are. They're out there. I mean, they they know exactly what's going on. You know where the bones are hidden. Uh, <laughs> you know where we're going. They know the direction we're going. They know where to get your jobs. The whole nine yards. Am I right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got Cameron Whitman from the Portland. Portland, right? Portland, Oregon. I'm not. I live in Portland, Oregon. But anyway, but you got to you got to get you you going to talk. Gonna I talk. am now working. I'm on my second week with the city of Portland. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Portland, city of. Sure. You the man. <laughs> you the man. You've been around. Okay. Then we got Scott here. He's from the state, from Salem aspect of it. And all due respect, Scott has a he, he's a legislative aide, right? And that was for Senator. Senator Alan DeBoer, freshman Senator from DeBoer. Southern yeah, Oregon. Yeah, yeah. So so Scott's been around, and you've seen him on the show aspect of it. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna give Scott an opportunity to give us an update of what's going on, whatever he wants to talk about. Just give us an update on what is the status of Salem from a, from a good working class citizen uh, all over the state. We want to know what's going on and where are our priorities and where are we going. Where are we going, Scott? We just had a round of legislative committee days uh, take place this last week. Okay. And one of my focuses there, Senator Floyd Przanski from Eugene, he's convened a work group along with Josephine County Circuit Judge Pat Wolke, who's a good friend of mine uh, going way back. Um, and what they want to do is update the state's civil commitment statutes because they're from the 1970s and a lot's changed between now and then in terms of mental health and our understanding of it. And some of the statistics they mentioned were just absolutely appalling hmm. uh, in terms of we have you know, this percentage of the population has serious mental illness, yet they're 17% of our jail population and growing. And the fact of the matter is, we have a lot of people in our prisons and in our jails who simply do not belong there. Uh, there are people with untreated mental illness, uh, but the problem with our system that we have in place right now is that there are no avenues for these people to get help until they're already in the criminal really? justice system, and at which point it's too little too late. Mm -hmm. I remember... I covered a murder, murder trial in Grants Pass several years ago and watching the defendant's sisters on the witness stand crying, saying, we tried to get him help. Nobody would help us. Hmm. We, and then, you know, the guy ended up killing the former mayor of Cave Junction and oh, then wow. committed suicide in prison before he was ever able to stand trial. Hmm. So we've got a huge problem on our hands. And these guys are going to be working hard to see what it is that we can do. Judge Wolke wanted to model it kind of after that county's drug court, which has been a hugely successful program where, you know, the, the war on drugs, we've seen a lot of people incarcerated mm. over the years for nonviolent drug offenses. We realize that, well, maybe you pull some of those folks out of that system and try to get them the help that they need rather than going at it from a punitive perspective. Mm. If you're already having mental health issues and you end up in prison, it is not going to make you better. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes for drug abuse. So uh, it'll be interesting to see the work that they do on that over the next few months, but I'll mm -hmm. be participating. You know, and and, and where, where are most of these people are, as far as the state of Oregon? Portland, Oregon, or Salem? Or, well, where are these folks that are we're having these issues as far as mental illness? Concerned? Well, it's everywhere. And that, okay. that's the problem that we see is that you have a facility like the state hospital in Salem where it's all centralized. But if you live on the other end of the state, your family, your support network is on the other end of the state. Um, what they want to see done instead is keep it more community-based where people have that support mm -hmm. network, mm -hmm. have access to resources mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the big things we worked on. The other is uh, it's been in the news a bit that 
a cap and trade bill is going to be coming up in the February short session, except they're calling it cap and invest. And they tried to get it passed this last session. It wasn't anywhere near ready yet. And so they're convening a series of work groups on that. It's pretty ambitious though. So they have four different work groups. And I sat through the first couple of them the other day where you get the presentation from DEQ, but it, it, all the work groups have different interests represented on them. And they're very large work groups. So the idea is that these huge groups of people are going to be able to come to consensus on this thing in the space of a couple of months worth of meetings. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, whether or not they'll have something that's workable, that's palatable, that, and be able to achieve consensus among that many different various stakeholder groups mm -hmm. remains to be seen. And what does that mean from a lease standpoint, cap and trade to the average person out there? It's, it's impact to them and their wallet. Well, uh, essentially what it's going to boil down to is there are around 42 businesses that are going to be targeted for it, um, and they're going to hope to raise something like $700 million, and you do basic division and say, okay, that's about you know, $60 million. And these are the larger million. businesses, the, primarily? The larger polluters, they say, oh, Okay. Uh, and then you'll raise this pile of money, and then it'll go towards green energy jobs. Okay. It, that part's not very well spelled out, though, mm -hmm. and what was troubling to me is that uh, we have a history in this state. You have something like the business energy tax credit that got mm -hmm. to be this huge scandal. You got people actually going to jail for it. Uh, there was an audit that was done of that program a couple of years back mm -hmm. and spelled out and said, okay, well, here's what they should have done. You needed financial controls in place. You needed regular performance audits, you know, mm -hmm. number audits, mm -hmm. all these recommendations. Um, none of that was in the cap and trade bill that they're using as the model mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, the one that was from the short, from the regular session that we just adjourned in J July. Um, so I would like to see more accountability measures put into mm -hmm. it than are currently in it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, where that draft is at now and what it ends up being in November by the time they turn it into legislative council to draft a bill for the short session, it, it can go any number of ways. Cameron, you want, any questions for that? I'm going to go both, both ways. Once you made your presentation, <laughs> I'm going to ask Scott to ask well, you a question. I'm curious to hear what he has to say. Any, anything uh, of concern you might want to share with him? Uh, I think he's had a very busy legislative session. <laughs> okay. <for> sure. <laughs> if I have any issues, I'll see you next year. Okay, yeah, you will always be greeted warmly. Thank you. Great, 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 great. great, great. We want to bring Cameron in. I have one friend in Salem. We'll, open it up. <laughs> what we'll do, we'll, we'll let Cameron go, and then we'll kind of open it up a little bit between all three of us, all, both of you guys. Okay, Cameron, you got a new job. I do have a new job. What's your new job? <laughs> Somebody then? actually thought they would hire me. Oh, wow. About <laughs> <laughs> <My> time. <laughs> so I just finished my second week with the city of Portland. I serve as advocate for the East Portland Action Plan. East so Portland. East Portland Action Plan. So that is a special project uh, that was first uh, co uh, convened in 2007. Uh, the mayor at the time, Tom Potter, um, Noma County Chair at the time, Ted Wheeler, and then former House Speaker, now U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley, came together and uh, they started having conversations, which by 2009 eventually led to the city of Portland adopting a very broad sweeping document called the East Portland Action Plan. What does that and mean? so the East Portland Action Plan is a document which um, is used to guide the city and local stakeholders to better understand what needs to be done mm -hmm. in order for East Portland to have equity and parity within the region. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, many of the neighborhoods east of 82nd Avenue, mm -hmm. um, also the northeast side of, uh, of, of the city of Portland, uh, passed 102nd Avenue, that's East Portland. So many of those neighborhoods were incorporated into the city in the eight, 1980s and the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And so uh, before that, they were uh, overseen mostly by Multnomah County. Okay. And so they were very suburban and had their own loose regulations much different than what the city of Portland has. Okay. Uh, since that time, uh, the area is no longer suburban. It is very much uh, a huge part of Portland as a city. It's urbanized. Uh, over 25% of the city's entire population is living in East Portland. And so the demographics have changed. We're seeing people who um, have less income. We are seeing a lot of immigrant refugee people in the area. Mm -hmm. um, there is an extremely high representation of uh, people of color, mm -hmm. almost twice as much as the city of Portland itself. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, as we have all these new people coming to this area, um, 
it's still been designed as a suburban place. So we have these big arterials which people use to get through the neighborhood, and yet all these people who might not have access to cars and who need to walk around do not have sidewalks. And mm -hmm. so many of uh, PBOT, the Portland Bureau of Transportation, many of their high crash corridors are in East Portland. And so there are, and that's just one example of, of different issues happening there. Right now we're going through a huge issue with displacement uh, with the housing crisis as more uh, people who are lower income are being pushed away right. from the center, uh, center city. They're moving out into East Portland, which is creating this ripple effect of more people being displaced. That's another big issue. Uh, food deserts is, are a big issue. Having local jobs based in East Portland is also another issue. So since most of it is, you know, um, focused in, you know, um, Downtown is focused in um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ooh, uh, manufacturing. So a lot of manufacturing is focused in very specific hubs. For example, Columbia Corridor or Washington County. And uh, so it's not accessible mm -hmm. because for many people who uh, rely on bus transit, it's really easy to get east and west, but you can't get north and south. And so uh, there are a lot of issues with accessing opportunity in East Portland, mainly because of how the city. Um, how the area of East Portland was first structured, mm. and now that's under this new uh, ownership by the city of Portland, um, the investments needed to make sure that there's equity there have not yet to happen. And so the East Portland Action Plan has over 200 strategies. Um, precisely, they have 236 strategies that outline ways that we can work on economic development, uh, the environment, uh, public health and housing, uh, community building, and other things that can be done to make sure that East Portland is as vibrant and as um, accessible to opportunity as it deserves. Wow. Is there, what, what about a representative for North, South, and West? Well, that, is there such an animal? So um, I like am not sure if the East Portland okay. Action Plan has made a position on that. So, so okay. you know, I serve as you a servant. East, but you say so East. they have a they have theory of change model, okay. which is very much about empowerment mm -hmm. of East Portland and its residents. Mm -hmm. And so I do not speak for them. They mm -hmm. have over 80 people who come to their monthly meetings. You're invited. Fourth oh. Wednesdays of the month, mm -hmm. they'll feed you and everything like mm -hmm. that. Their meetings always end on time. So they're very organized. And you have my me role, they'll feed you. Exactly. <laughs> come all the way up from Kaiser <laughs> for a free meal. It's worth we'll it. We'll do that, Scott. <laughs> no, I can't cook. You really okay. need longer government meetings? <laughs> so you're done the last that. thing I want to do. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, going back to some, some of the things that you were doing, and you, were making, you were talking about various sites and various issues like transportation, or whatever. Foster Road is a biggie. Sure, that's a big issue. Aspect yeah. There. Where are you on that? I, would, I can. Re I remember that when the when the mayorship thing was. So going. I've only been here for two weeks. Oh, two weeks. So yeah, <laughs> you can't ask me any question. because <laughs> you, yeah, you've been around. You've been I around. I have been around. No, you've been here two two. Let's see. I Since I 2009. Right. Yeah, that's right. 2009. I was first on your show, I think, in 2010. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And wow, you were very old. familiar with a lot of these issues. <laughs> you ran for mayor, too. You're getting too. gray like uh, you. You, you, you. It's you true. Mayor too, so it's you, true. You got me? I'm a failed but mayoral candidate. Because mayor is, and because Foster Road was a, was a, was a mm -hmm. still a major issue. Yeah. People want to walk and this, that, and the other. It's very, and yeah. like you said, people are shifting over. And that's yeah. The whole issue of crime and everything else mm -hmm. is going that way. And the homeless. Now, that was mm -hmm. the other area. Are you going to be doing anything in front of the stand? Are you going to be responding to the homeless issue? That's an unsolvable issue in the city of Portland. I would not say it's unsolvable, that's why, but it's going to take, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take a lot more backbone than it currently okay. has right now. Okay. And I think for me, it is sad as somebody who uh, was formerly homeless, who had to use uh, you know, resources in Portland in my teen years, stayed in a shelter, um, now being an activist, for me, it's really sad to see a lot of people who think they're very liberal and have an animosity mm -hmm. for poor people. Mm -hmm. And they think that they don't. And they just don't realize how awful they sound when they paint poor people all in the same light and mm -hmm. don't realize how they have access to so many things that other people do not. Mm -hmm. And if we really were progressive as we say we were, we would not go out of our way to deny people their basic humanity. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think that there is truth um, uh, to a solution that can be found. But the problem is that we live in a political world and not everybody wants to get behind a solution, especially if the solutions are proposed by those directly affected. Right, right. So, so much of my work and why I'm so glad to be in my position with the East Portland Action Plan is making sure that all of our decision makers understand that if we're talking about addressing you know, these societal issues, let's listen to the people most directly impacted. Let's make sure they have representation right. Right. on these decision-making right. whatevers, you right. know? Right. Uh, we should not have a uh, homogenous city council. Right. Fortunately, that's changing. Yes, it's changing right. slowly. Right. Uh, but we needed that change to happen yesterday. Right. Right. And so on the issue of homelessness, uh, we need to stop 
putting all these plans together and all these committees and hiring all these czars to be head of these agencies. And yet we never allow people who've experienced homelessness or who consider themselves homeless to have that seat at the table. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the unique thing about you is that you've, that's your resume. You got that resume before you got this position. Yes. And that's the unique thing. That's one of the reasons why I... Lived experience is so important. That's what I'm saying. And that should be on a resume. See, and most of them haven't done that. Yeah. You know, you get you elected, you get, you get, we have an election. Yeah. And it's just, that's not the resume. A lot of these folks, sure, they want to vie for leadership, but they haven't had the exposure. How many jobs have you looked at that ask for lived experience? That's right. That's right. It's always professional experience. That's right. That's like right. we're professionalizing mm-hmm. poverty mm-hmm. or homelessness mm-hmm. or you know, mental health crises. We've been crises. institutionalizing mm-hmm. all these things for a long mm-hmm. time, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, know. you about, I, I don't know if you have these statistics off the mm-hmm. top of your head, but I've heard about this. <laughs> ex- per- a considerable percentage of the school-aged children in Portland are in East Portland. Yes. Yet I believe that it's area like 40%. of town has a disproportionately few amount of actual physical schools. So I don't know about the school number, but I believe it's 40% of uh, uh, school age youth do Mm. live in East Portland. So Mm. many, because like, you know, I'm at the age where I need to start thinking about if I'm going to go into home ownership. And I like, there's no possible way I can get anything west of 82nd Avenue. So for Mm -hmm. a lot of young families who are not having kids, they don't have the income of their parents. Mm -hmm. So many of them are in East Portland. In terms of number of schools, I'm not sure. I do know that we have many school districts there. And so we have Reynolds, we have a little bit of Centennial, uh, we have David Douglas, and we have Park Rose. Those are our main schools. I heard the same about parks, too. Yes, for as many children as there Mm -hmm. are in that part of town, Mm there aren't nearly as many mm-hmm. parks as there should be yeah. mm-hmm. to serve that population. Mm-hmm. It's true. And that a lot of the resources tend to go west of the river where you say, hey, wait a minute, this is where all the investment has been. This is yep. where the capital mm-hmm. is. This yep. is, And I've been hearing that griping for a long time, yeah. that mm-hmm. East Portland just doesn't get what they've pretty much been promised my mm-hmm. whole life. Yeah. <laughs> but he makes that point about the real estate. You know, it's not there anymore. Well, it's not there on the west side either. <laughs> So what do we do? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, what do you mean? When I, what I mean by that is that you know, we're talking about housing. Mm-hmm. It's like you were talking about the housing mm-hmm. aspect of it. The real estate had gotten so valuable aspect mm-hmm. of it, and it's pretty well taken up. Now, I, I have to say that when Charlie Hale was here, mm-hmm. he issued out a lot of permits. That's where, the, that was where all the high-rise went mm-hmm. up. And there's still a lot of permits. Mm-hmm. People, So you can't buy. People, people, in fact, are being gentrified because they can't pay the taxes. Mm-hmm. It's not, so gentrification is not just more just, quote, just being thrown out. It's just, hey, I just can't afford to live here anymore. Well, mm-hmm. plus what people don't realize, when you're the average voter and you get all these bonds and levies before you, you yeah. say, okay, that sounds great, that sounds great. Yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. Well, by the way, yeah, that gets true. tacked onto your rent. That's right. That's so, right. That's right. That's right. If it's all done through property taxes, yes. which it is, uh, your landlord gets a higher bill That's and right. he passes that on to you. That's part of the cost of doing business. Exactly, exactly. In fact, we just, we just, we just acted. We had the, one of the largest bond measures on the, on the school piece, the school mm-hmm. bond, important for the schools. Just, just recently. Right, you're going to pay big, for that one way or the money. other, and higher rent is one of the and ways that you pay for very it. Very much so. So, so anyway, but anyway, I want to throw that out to you because you, you got a big job. I mean, I, I, they, they've got the right person. Trust me. It shouldn't have, been a, shouldn't have been a part-time job. You're too kind. It shouldn't have been a part-time so job. So it's, it's not really a part-time job. So East Point Action has had a full-time advocate okay. for about 10 years now. Okay. And so that person has gone part-time, and we are now sharing. So I'm a co-advocate. No, you, and so you, for me, but, but you, but from you, going from an executive director to now being uh, a co-position is really uh, it's different. But it's also super relaxing because you know, it's taxing. But luckily, you know? they no, were able political. to pick you up because you got the resume. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I gotta say, a lot of nonprofits lot. refuse to lot. give me an interview. You know, yeah, well, as being I, the I like you know, Black Lives Matter, ninety nine percent person I, I, being I can, in the streets. People don't it. want no. a, a voice no. of truth. People don't want someone with courage who understands the urgency of fighting for what's right because they see that as a liability. They see that as oh, you might turn off funders or oh, you might not be controllable. And I think that I'm finally with a group of people who know what it's like to be ignored and who knows that uh, you can't play nice if you want to make immediate change happen. And so I'm, I'm really lucky. Many nonprofits, I think, would look at my resume and they'd still throw it out just because yeah. I'm quote unquote a radical. No, you're not a radical. I know I'm not. No, you're talking about solutions. This is all economics. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you understand? It's, it's about solutions. Mm-hmm. You are, you are so, you're in a solution kind of a mode because you've already had the experience. Mm-hmm. You've got the answers. 
And then over here, you got a situation that from an economic standpoint, let's just keep it the You're way gonna it is. You're going to have the mayor start calling me now? Well, let's just keep it the way it is, man. <laughs> will be like, Bruce Bessard said you have all the answers, hey, Cameron. Well, what do I do well, about this? But at least he hired you. <laughs> so, yeah, hired make you. his position full time. Yeah, yeah. No, my boss is Chloe. Ted had nothing to do with it. Yeah, but he's still the mayor. <laughs> yes, he, but he Chloe take... Udaley is the commissioner for Oni. So yeah, he pours an action plan. But he can take that bureau back anytime he wants. Okay. Just hey! the firing? Just the firing? I don't think so. He can take that bureau back and say, well, I want him to work for me. <laughs> Ted doesn't want me working for Or what it's worth, anyway. I've always thought the city's whole government structure is ridiculous. Okay. And kind of if works Ted ever messed with me, I'd be parking well, on his front yard. Uh, look, guys, I got, I've got two minutes. This has been awesome. This has been awesome to both of you. I mean, hopefully you'll you'll consider us uh, here at the Oregon Voters Digest for the futures because mm -hmm. we got a very we got campaigns coming mm -hmm. up this day and the other. I'd like for you to consider coming you you know yep. coming back and. Give us a little update. And Can I do one more shout out? For Go on, real quick. Like. So um, my main job is grants management. And so if you live in East Portland or you have uh, work that you do in East Portland, you know, my role is going to be giving out, uh, uh, managing a hundred thousand dollars worth of funds, which are given out by East Portland members. So okay, email good. me, Cameron dot Witten, W H I T T E N at Portland, Oregon dot gov. Those that grant, is going to be public in the next three days, so Wednesday. So okay. I will have it open until mid-November. And you'll identify, you identify those people. Gonna be you can write it in any language. You can write it. You can type it up. It can be Russian, Chinese, Good. Spanish, whatever. Good. We'll Good. take your grant. Good. And like you, you know how it is. Hopefully you'll come on the show and say, okay, fine, Bruce, this is how we're going to be spending this $100,000. And this is going to be the benefit to, to live a bill in I don't choose. It's the East Portland No, but once, once that decision is made, I'm just yeah. saying. I'd like for you to identify who those folks are going to do. Oh, sure, I can yeah, do man. that. We can do this. Yeah, we love to showcase we're the work that the we're show. doing. Okay. Some sidewalks would be great. Okay. Because, we'll, you know, we I don't know, have that much money. I know some of those areas. I mean, it's incredible. You go from Springwater Corridor, where you've got permanent homeless camps at mm -hmm. times, to neighborhoods mm -hmm. where you've got zombie houses next to mm -hmm. houses that people are yeah. still maintaining yeah, yeah. with unpaved roads in between. Oh, it's got it's been a pleasure. And then you got access to a bank Thank now. You. See, he'll, he'll be able to share your, <laughs> your resume. He'll share your resume up there, okay? Thank you. Gentlemen, this has been really a pleasure. Appreciate it. Again, good luck and we're going to have a good luck.